Good evening and welcome to the news roundup for Friday the 16th of June. Before we get into the news, please remember to like this video, share your views in the comments and share the video with your family and friends. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. The St. Catherine South Police are seeking four men in relation to the stabbing of a 16-year-old male student in Portmore, St. Catherine. Being sought are Jamil, otherwise called Ears, from Power Lane, a man known as EJ, also from Power Lane, OD from Hardware Lane, and Ocker from Rosemary Lane, all in Newlands, Portmore. The men are being asked to immediately report to the Portmore CIB. They are being sought in relation to a case of wounding with intent. It is understood that shortly after school was dismissed on Thursday around 2.30 p.m., the student and the four persons of interest got into a dispute near the school's main gate. The schoolboy was attacked with knives and steel pipes. The injured child was taken to the hospital by teachers where he was admitted with injuries to his head and a broken arm. At news time, the police had not yet established a motive for the attack. Members of the public are being asked to assist by providing information to the police on the whereabouts of these men. A dressmaker and a music producer were fatally shot by gunmen at the dressmaker's home in Lilliput, St. James. The victims have been identified as 63-year-old Vernice Blackwood and 28-year-old Romario Bromfield. The incident occurred on Thursday when armed men entered the yard and opened fire on Blackwood while she was sitting on her veranda. They then targeted Bromfield at the side of the house, while the woman's son managed to escape unharmed. The gunmen fled the scene, and the police investigators arrived to find the victims with multiple gunshot wounds. Both Blackwood and Bromfield were taken to the Cornwall Regional Hospital, where they were pronounced dead. Authorities found nine spent casings from M16 rifles and three casings from 9mm firearms. The motive for the attack has not yet been determined by the police. In a Teach Them News follow-up, family, friends and colleagues of Major Bonnie Paul Williams have reacted with shock and grief over the army man's shooting death on Ridgeway Terrace in Barbican on Thursday morning. Residents reportedly heard explosions sometime between 3.15 and 3.30 a.m. Checks were made and Williams was found lying on his back in the parking lot outside his home with a gunshot wound to the head. Preliminary investigations indicate that Williams had just returned home from a night out when he was shot and killed by unknown assailants who were in the parking area. It is believed that he was shot upon exiting his vehicle. It is being theorized that the assailants were in the process of stealing a Honda CRV which was observed on the scene with its bonnet ajar. An inmate was fatally stabbed by another during a dispute at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Centre in Kingston on Friday. He has been identified as Melvin Hill. The incident happened around 1 pm. It is understood that during the dispute, a sharp instrument was brought into play. The Department of Correctional Services has confirmed the incident and promised to provide more information in short order. The police and the Independent Commission of Investigations are conducting separate probes into the incident. Jean Ann Panton was remanded for an additional six months to allow investigators more time to submit crucial files related to the case. Panton, a former SSL Wealth Advisor, is facing multiple charges including larceny, falsification of accounts, forgery, uttering forged documents and breaches of the Cyber Crimes Act. She is accused of embezzling approximately $3 billion from over 30 SSL clients over a 10-year period. During the court hearing, the prosecution informed the judge that they have statements to serve on Panton's defense team, but other critical documents are still outstanding. The prosecution requested more time to go through the files and disclose the remaining documents. The judge granted the prosecution's request and set the next court appearance for December 6, 2023 where a plea and a case management hearing date will be set. The judge also emphasized the importance of keeping the victims informed about the progress of the case. Two brothers from Portland are being questioned by police investigators 
in connection with the stabbing death of a farmer during a domestic dispute in the Lennox district in the parish. The victim, identified as a 37-year-old Leighton Biggs, had visited the brother's uncle to express his dissatisfaction with the payment he had received for work he had done for one of them. An argument ensued between Biggs and one of the brothers, and later the other brother joined in the dispute. The uncle reportedly left the scene and returned to find Biggs running towards him with a stab wound to his chest. Biggs was taken to the Anatoby Hospital but was pronounced dead upon arrival. The brothers are now in police custody. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, has publicly criticized one of her former deputies, Dirk Harrison, for using the official letterhead of the office inappropriately. In 2010, Harrison wrote a recommendation on the office's letterhead for a man convicted of a criminal offense, requesting a new firearm license. Llewellyn has stated that she would never have approved such an action. The letter, bearing the coat of arms and the title of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, was signed by Harrison in his capacity as Deputy DPP and addressed to the Firearm Licensing Authority. Harrison defended his use of the letterhead, but Llewellyn deemed it inappropriate and issued a statement expressing her disapproval. Llewellyn clarifies that the office does not issue letters of recommendation for personal endeavors like firearm license applications, and the letterhead should be used strictly for official business. She asserts that she was unaware of Harrison's letter and that such conduct would never have been approved during her tenure. Llewellyn believes it is inappropriate for any Crown Council or Deputy DPP to issue recommendations for convicted individuals to external agencies outside of their official duties. A father in Clarendon is anxiously awaiting the safe return of his 13-year-old daughter, Shaminia Williams, who went missing after not returning home from school on Monday. The Clarendon police have confirmed that a missing persons report has been filed for the child. According to sources, Shaminia had allegedly made plans to celebrate her 13th birthday with a mysterious boyfriend, who is said to be from Ocherius. The father managed to obtain the boyfriend's name and number, but the phone has been turned off since their initial conversation. The father, Ricky Williams, expressed his deep concern for his daughter's well-being and pleaded for her to come home, assuring her that he loves her and will not harm her. There were reports that Shamini had responded to someone on WhatsApp claiming that her father does not love her and that she's fine where she is. However, Williams appealed to his daughter urging her to return home and promising to work out any issue that may have arisen. The public has been asked to contact the Lionel Town Police or the nearest police station if they have any information on Shamini's whereabouts. Matthew Hyde, who is accused of holding his girlfriend captive and torturing her, has been further remanded after his committal hearing was postponed to June 21st. Hyde, age 20, is facing charges of assault occasioning actual bodily harm, malicious communication, and false imprisonment. The committal hearing, where the judge will assess the evidence and determine if the case should proceed to trial, was originally scheduled to begin on Wednesday. However, the court requested additional time to obtain outstanding statements and prepare the case bundle. Hyde's alleged actions involved holding his ex-girlfriend captive for three days in his dorm room during which she was reportedly tortured. The incident was prompted by accusations of infidelity. Former Police Commissioner Owen Ellington is said to be recommended as the new Chairman of the Transport Authority. Ellington previously served as the 27th Police Commissioner from 2010 to 2014. His retirement in 2014 was attributed to the need for separation from police leadership prior to the Commission of Enquiry into the Conduct of Security Forces in Western Kingston and other areas during the limited state of emergency in May of 2010. In May of this year, there were 30 fatalities from 29 fatal crashes, according to data from the Road Safety Unit. This is a decrease compared to May of 2022, which saw 51 deaths from 46 fatal crashes. Pedestrians accounted for 27% of the road users killed, followed by motorcyclists. Males accounted for 93% of the deaths, while females accounted for 7%. Notably, there were no child fatalities in May. Overall, 
There has been 189 fatalities in 172 fatal crashes since the start of the year. With a 12% decrease in fatalities and a 9% decrease in fatal crashes compared to the same period in 2022. In business, port operator Kingston Wharves Limited is planning to expand its yard space by 25% over the next 18 months to accommodate 1 million containers. This forms a part of the company's ongoing US $60 million investment in the terminal and logistics operation at the port in Kingston. The expansion will involve increasing berthing and yard capacity, expanding the terminal's boundary, and relocating some buildings. Kingston Wharves aim to manage 1 million 20-foot equivalent containers compared to its current capacity of 5 to 600,000. In the last quarter, Kingston Wharves generated revenue of Jamaican $2.3 billion with a profit of $684 million. On the international scene, Six people, including three children, were found dead in a Tennessee home after police responded to a shooting and discovered the residence on fire. A seventh individual, who had suffered gunshot wounds, was found alive and hospitalized. Authorities believed it was a domestic situation that escalated into a murder-suicide. The suspected perpetrator is among the deceased, identified as Gary Barnett, while one of his victims is his estranged wife, Regina Barnett. Court documents revealed that Regina had obtained a no-contact order against Gary due to threats and verbal abuse. Autopsies on all six victims will be conducted in Nashville. And in sports, the reggae girls are once again in conflict with the Jamaica Football Federation. The current issue resolves around practice games ahead of the FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand next month. Team captain Khadija Shah expressed her disappointment with the JFF in a social media post, citing a subpar planning, transportation, accommodation, training conditions, compensation, communication, nutrition, and access to resources as ongoing concerns. Shaw mentioned that the team has previously met with the JFF to address these issues. The logistics of the team's camp are described as disorganized, leading to missed FIFA international friendly matches and potentially impacting their World Cup preparation. The girls will begin their World Cup campaign against France on July 23rd, followed by matches against Panama and Brazil. And that is it for your news roundup for today. We would appreciate you liking this video, leaving a comment, and sharing the video with your family and friends. Have a good evening, and see you next time.